Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service, and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Augsburg and Happy Easter. We give thanks for your presence here today. And if you're visiting with us, a special welcome to you. Please let us know how we can share with you in your faith journey. At the middle of every aisle is a friendship register, which we would encourage you to pass down your pew so that we can celebrate your presence here today. And if you're visiting with us, that's a great way to share information about who you are. I'd like to thank this brass quintet from the UNC School of the Arts, who has given of their morning to share in their gifts of music with us. Thank you to each of you for adding to this Easter experience. And I'd also like to remind you that in a few weeks' time, we'll be gathering here between our worship services on April 28th for an important congregational meeting. It is the long-awaited campus renewal uh, vote, as we have uh, had a team that's worked for a long time to build that all up together. Uh, that does include, as I see many of you waving, uh, significant adjustments to our climate control system. Uh -huh. That's right. Um, and so if you want to see renderings of what we're doing in the project in the gathering room across the hall from where you entered are some neat designs and there will be people there who can answer questions about that. But that vote for all Augsburg members is on the 28th between services. As we gather today, God is present not only in word but also in holy sacrament. And all are invited to the communion table, regardless of your tradition or denomination. We share in doing that through the act of intinction. You will be invited forward, in which you will receive the host, the bread, from one of the pastors. And then you make your way to the next station, where one of our communion assistants will have a chalice, in which you dip your host, your bread, into the wine. If you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing, or to do that for your children, please simply place your hands over your chest as you come forward. And we do have a gluten-free option available on this side. Simply let Pastor Joe know when you come forward that you need gluten-free. So much more happening in the life of our congregation that I draw your attention to on your announcement sheet. Our service continues now as we hear God's word. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness for sins through his name, the word of the Lord.
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. They saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And they entered the tomb. They saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. 
So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. my letters? Huh? I lost my letters. Uh, we'll have to see. If there's anybody who's found any of my letters, can you please hold them up? Does anybody have? Oh, oh, oh. I must have lost them in the middle. Okay, guys, I need each of you to go and fetch one of those letters from somebody there. Hold them high. I need everybody to go fetch a letter. Here we go. Okay. All right. We may need, you guys might need to go back and get one more each. Can you each go get one more letter? Okay, oh, okay. Lindley, you're good, hon. We have enough. Okay, sounds good. All right, let's look at our letters here for a second. Looks like you've got a guy named Al. Okay, and you've got AU, which is Pastor Katie's team. And you've got L, and Ellie, what do you read there? You've got an I. Hmm. Okay, so lots of L's, lots of vowels. This is like eight points in Scrabble. This is very good. Huh? Yeah, okay. What word do you think we can make with these? Alleluia. Alleluia. All right. You knew this. Your mission, kids, is without grown ups' help, is to stand behind me and spell out Alleluia with the first A over here and the last one over here. See if you can do it without me helping you. Go. Can you get up? How we doing? Yeah, we doing okay? Lindley's taking charge. Okay. How we doing? Okay. UIA. You don't get that very often. All right, can you all hold them up and see if we've got it? I'm going to turn around. You ready? Oh, let's do it. Okay. Okay, how about A-L-L-E-L? -L -E -L? That U needs to keep going down. A-L-L-E-L-U-I-A. -L -L -E we've got it. Good job. All right. Have we said hallelujah a lot this morning? Yes, we have, and we'll sing it more. 
We've been waiting to say this word throughout the whole season of Lent, and it's a word of joy. It's a word of saying, yay, God. It's a word of saying, Jesus is the victor. Jesus is the winner, and we are winners because of that. And so we say, Alleluia. So let's have the kids say Alleluia as loud as we can and see if the grown-ups can say it louder. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Alleluia! See if the grown-ups can say it louder. Alleluia! That was, that was a tie. Okay. Alleluia. Thank you for helping us find our letters. We come from all sorts of different places to church. Sometimes it's easy to get here. Sometimes it's hard. But when God brings us all together, we proclaim Alleluia. Can we remember that? All right. Let's say a prayer. We repeat after me. Good morning, God. Good morning, God. Today we say Alleluia. Today we say Alleluia. Because we're reminded, because we're reminded. that Jesus defeated death rose from the dead, and lives forever. Because of all that, we can too. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Alleluia. Amen. All right, good work, team. Thank you all for coming up. You can head back to your seats. Great job, great job. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've been in worship the past few weeks, you notice that there's been a little tension as the basketball tournament in this season has kind of seeped into things. Now, I admit that I started it two Sundays ago when it was conference tournament weekend, and I was excited that my alma mater and Pastor Katie's alma mater were in the SEC championship game together. Congratulations on your victory, Pastor Katie. And then I said something else. I might have been well aware that there were a lot more SEC teams than ACC teams that made the tournament, and I may have said something about the dominant conference in basketball, to which many of you may have gasped in audible chagrins. And then after that, we enter the NCAA tournament. That first round doesn't go too well for the SEC. And when Pastor Joe returns to the pulpit last Sunday, he's quick to remind us that the ACC in early rounds has fared better than the SEC. <laughs> now, after that, and I do appreciate the irony of this, even though I've become a local fan, it was not lost on me that Wake's season ended at the hands of an SEC opponent. <laughs> So now we're here this morning with at least one SEC team making the Final Four, and at least, because of this afternoon's game, one ACC tournament making the Final Four, not yours. <laughs> but an opportunity for us to see where this leads, so tune in next week for the end of the story. We are a culture of competition. And as humans in this world we live in, in this rat race we participate in, we find that competition is all around us and we, we love a good victory. We love to be on the winning team. We love to have those clothes that we have in our closet represent a good win, all of those things. We love victory. Now, you may not be a sports person, and I certainly understand that, but victory is found in other ways because I know that many people find the thrill of the victory at the checkout when they've used so many coupons and discount codes that they feel like they've declared victory over the retailer. Some of you find victory in a hand of bridge or a game of Scrabble. Some of you find victory when the contestant you're rooting for gets the rose or stays on the island. <laughs> And we celebrate our victories in community, too. We actually have one among us who's part of this team. When the Airstream on Renolda wins the national award for best drive through coffee shop, we share in that victory and the long lines that follow. <laughs> hey, sometimes even just being able to accomplish everything on our to-do list is a real victory. We love being part of a victory. And today, we celebrate the greatest victory. This is the feast of victory for our God. The strife is o'er, the battle done. Now the victors triumph won. We are here today to celebrate the biggest, 
most impactful victory ever. Christ defeated death, overcame the sin and brokenness of this world in its entirety. He suffered death and was buried, but on the third day rose again. And in he is risen, we find victory. And so if we're people who like victory, if this is something so excited, then why then, in our gospel text from Mark today, why after all that, if knowing how big a deal this is, were the women too scared to say anything? For they had seen the fullness of it. And they went out from fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seen, seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. These three women were the first to witness the power of the resurrection. And yet they were so overwhelmed by what had happened that they weren't sure what to do or what to say. Terror and amazement had seized them. But maybe the question doesn't belong in the past tense. Because we shouldn't just ask, why were the women too scared to say anything? We might ask, and why are we? Why are we so often afraid to publicly and willingly and fully with all our heart and mind and soul acknowledge the victory of Jesus' death and his resurrection? Why are we so afraid to claim this victory? Are we afraid that we'll be cast as one of those religious people? Or are we afraid that we might be connected to other Christians who we just don't vibe with? Or are we in fear that actively acknowledging the resurrection promise means that we might have to change the ways we live our lives? Or does it just seem so overwhelming simply to do those things that the angel proclaimed this morning? Do not be alarmed and go and tell others that he is going ahead of you. That first Easter morning, the women felt the power of the responsibility of being the first to witness the resurrection. And I know that I too would need some time to process that. And we know that even though right there in that moment they didn't go out and do what the messenger told them to, that they certainly lived that out in the days and weeks to come. So why, 2,000 years later, is it so hard for us to do the same? These simple words are big commands if you think about it. First, when we're told, do not be alarmed, we have to put in perspective what that really means. For if we are to pause and ponder the world around us, there are many, many reasons to feel alarmed the threat of violence and war in foreign countries and even in our community. The causes and the results of hunger and malnutrition, not just in far off places, but in our neighborhoods. The pain and brokenness of addiction that captures the lives of so many our own lives and those we love. And we're told, do not be alarmed. Second, just like the women at the tomb, we are told, go and tell that he is going ahead of us. But to tell people that Jesus is going to be there in the end, that the end of all these alarming things, all of the things that break apart our lives and our relationships and cause us anxiety and tension and all of the brokenness of this world and, and we're told, don't worry, he's going to be there at the end? That's still a lot to bear. But thanks be to God that the promise that we receive in our baptisms is real. That in our baptisms, and nourished every time we come to the table, we are promised the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. 
we know that as we proclaim, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, that he has prepared a place for us. I still wear a t-shirt from 2016 that celebrates the World Series championship of my favorite baseball team. And at the looks of it, I'm not gonna get a new t-shirt this year either. <laughs> I'll wear that t-shirt till I wear it out. My wife will probably say that I already have. But I've never had a shirt for the biggest victory of them all, the one that took place in the 30s CE, when Christ defeated death once and for all. Would you wear a championship t-shirt that said, Christus victor, eternal champion, victory over sin and death for all time? Or would that feel weird to proclaim that message with such boldness in the same way that we would for the North Siders or whatever other team you love. The truth is, Jesus doesn't care about t-shirts or slogans. Jesus doesn't want us blending his message into our own views and ideologies. No, what Jesus cares about, what Jesus wants us to wear is his love. His love he made known in each of us. His love given to us in spirit in our baptisms. In that third verse of the hymn of the day, which we'll sing in just a moment, one of my faves begins, Oh, fill us, Lord, with dauntless love, set heart and will on things above. That word dauntless is a beautiful word. It means incapable of being intimidated or subdued. And that's exactly how Jesus calls us to celebrate the victory over sin and death. To open a vault of love that we store inside of us and share it with the world, free from fears of rejection and resentment, free from the fear of being labeled, free from the fear of being attached to marginalized or underrepresented communities, free from the fear of not having enough, free to share our own weaknesses and failings to help lift up others, free to give ourselves and share our possessions more than we feel like we are able, free to be open to new relationships with people we never thought we'd never share in any victory with. Because there's one thing that there's plenty of in this world, and that is God's never-ending love. We are called to share it with every person we encounter. But not in t-shirts or social media posts or victorious splendor, but in our actions and in our words. When we are free from being alarmed, when we hear that call, do not be alarmed, we are set forth to do exactly what the messenger said. Go and tell others that he is going ahead of you. If there is one thing that I am most confident of in this broken world, one thing that gives me the courage to stand up here every Sunday morning, one thing that sustains me every day is that the love of God made known in his death and resurrection is bigger than anything that this world can throw at us. Even sin, even death, nothing can separate us from the love of God in the risen Christ, Jesus, our Lord. This Easter, and every day that follows, we get to together celebrate a victory that we all can share in. A victory that belongs to you, to me, to the person who slept at the back of our building last night, to the child hungry this morning, to the one who is about to take their last breath on earth. All of us share in this victory. Nothing can take that away from us. Fill us, Lord, with dauntless love. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>
Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God from not made, the one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and he came to the Lord. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and the Lord was his church. He is ascended in heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Earth and Life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it, where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Merciful God, we pray for all people and nations. Free oppressed communities. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Today we lift up Gray Boyette, Johannes Woldemariam, Meredith Robbins, Janet Polk, Vern Knudsen, Bruce Griffin, Jim Castile, Gail Nichols, Sue Holland, Christopher Lelladola, Nelda Clayton, Judy Vernon, Martha Clark, Clemence Ostermeyer, Sandy Brodkin Dreis, Paul Martin, Bob Opal, Elaine Williams, Yvonne Truhan, Trudy Freeman, and all those we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. Today we remember Alice Stevens, Bill Taylor, Phil Williams, Shirley Yunt, Manfred Mute, Charles Kerfess, Peggy King, Jim Robinson, and Stephen Griffin. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Also you. We share God's peace.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe, your mercy is everlasting, your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Amen. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life in us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun, and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, The gifts of God for the victorious people of God. Thanks be to God.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. us pray. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and with you peace.
Go in peace. Christ is risen. Christ he is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.